Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the news that Paul Marshall, who's like the front man for GB News owners, may be about to stand down from the board as redundancies are set to be announced as well. And what I'd like to consider is the position that GB News has found itself in and what their immediate future may look like. So the first thing to note is that GB News does not have a functioning business model. The channel is coming up to its third anniversary and their most recent balance sheet showed record losses of £42 million. And although there's talk of redundancies, it's not like they're lavish with staff. Although they are inefficient with presenters, I think, people who appear on GB News shows as guests talk about how there's basically no one there. When Marina Perkis debated with Jacob Rees-Mogg, she said there was nobody else in the studio. She even joked to him, what would happen if I, if I leaned over and strangled you? Right? There's nobody even operating the camera. So if they're already operating a skeleton production crew and making losses in excess of £42 million, what scope is there for redundancies suddenly giving them a decent business model? You know, perhaps they'll scale back their presenters, they'll be paid the most. Some shows seem to have multiple presenters on, trying to create a sort of debate-style format. But, you know, most don't bring any viewers in. They're paying Lee Anderson £100,000 a year for his show, but last time I checked, his viewing figures were worse than mine. They're going to be paying Boris Johnson quite a lot of money. I'm not quite sure, has he started yet? I don't think he's even started yet. But let's say he bombs. I mean, he's got more chance of attracting viewers than Lee Anderson. But what if he doesn't? What if he bombs? Nigel Farage attracts a lot of viewers for them. So did Dan Wotton, I think, before he was sacked. There may be one or two others who are earning their keep. But whenever I do see viewing figures for individual shows, it seems that most of their presenters are just filling time in for the station until Farage is back on. And one of the problems GB News has always had is that they have they seem to have overestimated their potential viewership. Although there is some diversification of views expressed on the channel, it essentially has to all be what you might call anti-woke. The channel seems designed to push a very hard line on persuading people that civil liberties are somehow a problem. And there are a lot of people in the country who allow themselves to be persuaded of this, thinking that actually if you remove civil liberties, it's only removing them from the people they don't like, not from them. But having that central line running through all of their shows and agenda, nonetheless limits their potential audience. And for this limited audience, they also had competition with Talk TV, which was the Murdoch attempt to do basically the same thing. Although Talk TV was the first to blink, they've decided they did want a business model, so they've dropped out now, or at least dropped out of the, the television broadcast race. So maybe GB News can harvest some of their viewers. Maybe their losses next year will just be back down to 30 million or something. But money is also an issue. It's not just that their viewing figures aren't great. Like They often talk about, oh, how we're beating Sky or BBC. It's not really true. They're not getting more viewing figures than them. They're just fiddling the nature of their output to compare themselves with lower audience shows on the big channels. But views aside... They also have problems with advertising revenue. A lot of companies boycott them because of the extreme nature of the views expressed on the show. And of course, because a lot of people use their consumer power to stop buying the products of those who do associate themselves with the channel, even some companies that do advertise sometimes are put under pressure to stop advertising. And then GB News has a big old whine about it. But this creates a double problem for GB News. First of all, because advertising is basically an auction, if there are fewer companies competing for that advertising space on their channel, then each will not have to pay as much for it. Second, I mean, as someone who derives his income from the auction of adverts, I can tell you the last few years has, um, has seen a decline. There's way lower sums being spent on advertising as our economy has struggled. I, I'm not boycotted. And the advertising rate I'm getting I mean, it was significantly lower in 2022 on average than 2021. It was significantly lower in 2023 than 2022. This year, so far, seems to be a little bit lower than last year so far. So certainly no improvements on the horizon. So basically, in all the time GB News has been active, the advertising rate has been dropping year on year. They're a bit of a jinx, really. Then there's the regulatory side. 
We know that Ofcom keep doing GB News a lot of favours. They're clearly breaking the rules, but Ofcom keep coming up with excuses like, oh, well, there are small channels, so the rules don't need to apply to them. And that's not hyperbole. They've recently said that. And yet Ofcom are finding that they're now having to call out GB News for breaking rules at times, although there's no punishments. But we are about to change to a Labour government. Now, Labour governments traditionally don't mind regulation and there'll be no love lost between the party and GB News if Ofcom were to be given some teeth and told to do their jobs properly. Frankly, the only good news GB News have right now is that their main rival has croaked and that if Labour do turn the economy around, their advertising revenue rate will at least go up. But if they have to comply with broadcast media rules properly, they'll have to change their output and then where will they be then? Perhaps they can cut costs and better comply with the regulations by not paying Tory MPs to host the shows. After all, there won't be many Tory MPs left after this year, we hope. You know, Jacob Rees, Mogley, Anderson, they're not favourites to remain MPs after the election. So if they want to carry on presenting shows with Tory MPs, they may need to find alternatives or they could just carry on operating as a sort of politician's graveyard because they have former right wing politicians presenting as well. But with the news that Paul Marshall may be stepping down. So then there's been a lot of talk in the last 24 hours about would GB News even survive? Now, it does depend on the reason. What seems likely is that actually Marshall's just so desperately wants to take over the Telegraph that maybe he's been privately told that his, in, his direct involvement with GB News is a bit of a barrier to that. And maybe he's stepping down for that reason. We, remember, it, 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 we don't know he's definitely stepping down. And if that is the reason, of course, he'll just rearrange things to make sure his money still has representation via a proxy. In fact, according to the report on Sky News, which made it clear he's not definitely stepping down, the seat on the board would just pass to someone funded by Marshall anyway. So he'd still have that connection. So I'm not sure the move would mean much for GB News funding directly because, I mean, if Marshall did leave in a, re in a re very real sense, is it with us, he went and took his money with him. Um, I mean, he pumps a lot of money into the leaky bucket, which is GB News's finances. Presumably that would dry up. And you may say, well, you know, given that GB News doesn't seem to have an actual business model, it's hard to imagine anyone who expects a direct return on their investments to get on board. And you may say, well, I mean, there's always a billionaire willing to chuck a few quid at a propaganda machine in order to shift public attitudes in a way which makes them much wealthier. I mean, Paul Marshall was such a beast. But maybe the timing's not great. Frankly, I think the Conservatives were mad to let GB News have free reign. Despite employing and interviewing Tory MPs, the discussions are generally opposed to what the Conservative government are doing. They're no friends of the Conservative Party. So the fact that the Conservative government hadn't been making sure Ofcom dealt with them properly remains a mystery to me. But beyond just political ineptitude, maybe it could be explained by the general attitude amongst Tories who tend to be very right wing that regulation is bad. You know, their libertarian tendencies, oh, regulation is all terrible. Maybe their natural inclinations prevented them taking GB News to task. Not because they thought GB News were of net benefit to them, but because they just don't like the idea of regulation and enforcing regulation. Labour gained nothing from letting the channel be a law unto themselves. GB News poisoned the political debate with lies, which is a threat to Labour's attempts to normalise politics, and Labour have no ideological predisposition towards deregulation, quite the reverse in fact. There's every chance that regulation could be tightened up for the media, but even if it isn't, then surely the next government will at least ensure that what regulation is on the statute books is complied with. And what would GB News do about that? Whine to their viewers about a political witch hunt? I don't think they're attracting Labour's target voters, so I'm not sure that's going to work. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.